Thank you again, uh, Andreas, for uh, this new video interview. The third on the Loud TV. And now you're here to talk about your new yeah, new album. Uh, it's kind of uh, uh, new stuff for you. Um, and uh, it's called Sepul Quarta. And uh, it's a very, very unique experience for Sepultura. It's a pleasure to be here with you all. Uh especially to talk about new material that we have. It's great to see the festival's announcements and, and the touring coming back, you know, it's really excited about that. But um, because of the pandemic, you know, last year, we have a new album that came out February 2020. We have the whole tour lined up, all the calendars, the whole festival season and etc. And, you know, we have to stop everything. We have to cancel everything. Not only that, we couldn't see each other We couldn't go practice. We couldn't see, you know, uh, we couldn't be a band anymore, basically. You know, so uh, we kind of invented this event every Wednesday because Quarta in Portuguese is Wednesday. It's like the fourth day of the week. And uh, also connected to the concept of Quadra, né? Uh, connected with the, the numerology, geometry and all that stuff. Um, Uh, starting at 4 p.m. every Wednesday, you know, it helped us really to build this event. But we we were we did, we were, uh, we weren't thinking of the new album. The idea was really to do every Wednesday just for the internet. We have a connection with the fans. Uh, we talk to, uh, to to people to to uh, guests that we invited. We play Sepultura's music. We talk about their history. So we kept the band working. We kept the band with a purpose, with an objective. And it helped us a lot really to keep together, you know. Um, but we, we, we were not thinking about the album, as I said, you know. In the end of 2020, when we decided to stop and, and everything, we saw that we have an amazing material in our hand. Uh, look at the guests when we gather here, you know. It's fantastic. It's amazing. And then we remastered and remixed the album. We decided to put uh, on an album. Like, we chose 15 songs. And, um, and it's so special because this album is not live. And it's not either from the studio, you know. Mm -hmm. The Hata Mahata, for instance, you have three drummers. I mean, to do that live and in the studio is a pain. <laughs> a lot of work with a lot of microphones and you know, a lot of people and stuff. And this time we have people working vocals on the bathroom and this drummer playing his, uh, uh, filming his part with his uh, phone and sending from his backyard and stuff, you know. It was amazing, it was like a, Almost like a MacGyver effect, you know, <laughs> having a few elements and making it happen. And um, and these versions are very unique because they're not live, they're not a studio. Everyone was at their, their home houses, you know, one in Canada, another one in Sao Paulo, the other one in Japan, you know, whatever. And it was amazing, you know, it's a very special, unique album by itself basically you know because we didn't plan that album in the beginning but it just came, it came out like that was it easy technically to set up and to record uh especially the the music for with the musicians yeah yeah it was pretty easy because of technology you know because uh, we could exchange uh, files uh, sound files very easily through the internet you know downloading stuff and sending from studio to studio And I, or, I organized everything here and I, and I mix myself, you know, that concept of homemade, really. I'm, I'm not a, a, a professional mixer, you know, by any means, but uh, I have some know-how, I have a Pro Tools and stuff, so I put everything in place and it's there for the video. Of course, for the album, we remix with a professional and everything, so it's, it's a whole different story. But for every Wednesday, like we did, every week we have to find a, a, a song to play, Eloy recorded his drums and he sent to me. I put my guitars and then, you know, received bass, received vocals and that thing. So I did it like that. You know, we did it like that. And our webmaster did all the editing for the videos. You know, we created the logo together. It was very homemade, really, you know, to, to show that uh, it could be done, you know, in a situation that we have so many limitations, you know, to, to move and to talk to people and to interact and... And uh, being away from the stage is crazy. It never happened since I started on this career, you know. So, but Sepul Quarter really saved uh, uh, um, our life, basically, in the band. And uh, we have an album out of it, you know, which is amazing. Uh, so, who did mix and master the, the, the album? 
Yeah, the, the mixing of the album was done by Conrado Ruter, which is a Brazilian guy here that we work with him. He has a, his own studio and he, he mastered as well. And the only song was mixed by a different guy it was a Mask by Devin Picker. He was the guest. He, he did the guitar, the second guitar and sang. And he asked me if he could mix. I said, well, fuck yeah, man, of course. You know, thank you. <laughs> and it came out great. You know, it came out really cool. Last time... Um... You told us in Paris that you have the privilege uh, to tour the world and meet a lot of musicians. And it seems that, yeah, it's still the case or not really meeting, but um, uh, on video. But uh, yeah, I think it, you, you, you add 57 guests. <laughs> yeah, man, the number is amazing. That's what... That's when we, we realized we had such an amazing material in our hands that we could put on an album and then we start working on the album, you know? Because yeah, it's a, it's a fun, I mean, the, the live Q&A, we not only talked about music and Sepultura and heavy metal, we talked about depression, we talked about the, the environment, you know, we talked about uh, 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 women representation and racism and many other stuff, you know? It was amazing. We have journalists as a guest. We have one panel once with all the, the, the main skateboarders in the world, you know, the top skateboarders from the past and present, uh, talking about anything, you know, in, uh, and opening this uh, space for the fans to make questions and to participate as well. And uh, it was very, you know, it was a lot of work, but uh, it was not difficult. It was just a lot of work that we organized ourselves Each one of us with our own parts and, and you know, attributes to make this happen. And, and we did it. You know, we, we, we feel great that we, we created this album out of nothing, basically. Actually, that's what the cover is all about. You know, this dead bird with the flowers coming out. That's what I told Eduardo Recife, the artist, you know. Uh, this is what we create out of nothing, basically. You know, we had a whole different life, a whole different rhythm, touring, touring stage, and then pa everything stops you know one day is one thing the other day is completely nothing you know so uh and uh he represented that very well with his artwork you know i think that we all love that and uh you really what it is you know we created something out of nothing is it odd for you artists uh not to tour uh for yeah almost maybe two years economically yeah uh, i mean no it's, it's a lot more than odd it's terrible <laughs> It's horrible. It's a, It's like a. It doesn't make any sense, you know. Music. It's live. Music is on stage. All the rest is the consequence of being on stage. You know, recording, making video clips and interviews and and traveling is to be on stage. You know, that's where the music happens. You have a lot of tricks in the studio. You have a lot of tricks in videos and stuff. But the stage is where everything happens. That's why. It, theater, you know, didn't die with movies because that's special, you know, it's very truthful, it's very there, it's very alive, you know, and uh, of course it's weird, it's more than odd and weird and terrible, you know, since 1989, when Sepultura started touring the world, we never really stopped, regardless of the changing of the singers and stuff, we're always working in a studio or working on a video or traveling and playing everywhere, you know. We visited 80 countries in 35, 36 years. You know, it's crazy. And all of a sudden, everything stops in our best momentum with an album out, <laughs> with, a, with a tour of the dreams, you know, great festivals in the United States and everything. But we face the present, you know. We couldn't be crying for the, the spelled milk, whatever makes sense to you, but, uh, you know, It's like, uh, it's a saying that we have here in Brazil, but I, I just translated. it. So, <laughs> but uh, we couldn't, we couldn't really cry for what's not there anymore. You know, we have a new situation. Let's face this new situation and let's work with the tools we have in our hands, you know, and Sepul Quarta is, is that, you know, that's our answer to that. I, I like the, um, the track listing because it's, uh, uh, yeah, very diversified in your discography, very old yeah. song. But I, I haven't heard for years, you know, like uh, you said, uh, Rata Mata, oh, there is a, a very improvisation and it's great, you know, it's uh, yeah, it yeah, like, uh, and it's great. And uh, of course, great 
great artists like Devin Townsend or uh, Rob from uh, uh, Death okay, Angel. Angel. I mean, uh, they are friends, you know. And 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 like I said, we didn't plan to make an album. So you know, every Wednesday it has its own story. Was was not connected. We didn't feel a connection. Of course, we did something from Roarback. Let's do something from Arise. Uh, let's do something whatever. Oh, we have three singers, female. Let's do Hatred Aside because we have three singers there. It's me, Jason, and, and Derek. You know, uh, the acoustic stuff, you know, Rafael Bittencourt from Angra. He's an amazing musician uh, that really uses acoustic a lot. So let's try to do something together. He made that beautiful arrangement over uh, the music you know, of Sepultura. So each one had their own story. You know, Fred Leclerc, Leclerc for instance, he in a backstage, yeah, Fred French, in a in a backstage uh, meeting that we had there, you know, in a, one of Sepultura's shows, he said, "Hey, why you don't guys play Slave, New, uh, Slave of Pain? It's a great song and stuff." And I said, "Ah, it's old. There's a lot of parts, a pain in the ass. We have to relearn. You know, we're lazy." <laughs> yeah, but I told him, you know, next time we're gonna be ready to play that song and you, you jam with. Of course, it didn't happen because we didn't tour, but. Um, we decided to do on Sepul Quarta, you know, I called him, oh, let's do Slaves of Pain on this format and stuff. And he did an amazing job, man. You know, he played note by note, like all the leads. I, I let him do everything, you know. So, uh, and that's another thing, you know, the guest was really free. And I, I gave room. We all gave room for them, for vocals, for leads. You know, Devin Thousand did a whole new lead for Mask and, um, uh, and other stuff, you know. I think that's the, the, the beauty of it. You have a new performance of the Sepultura, which is not live and not in the studio. You know, it's something else. Um, I, I've just in, uh, interviewed uh, Fernanda Lira, something like one month ago for our new project. And I think the, the girls yeah, from Brazil are really angry and they're, they are so... Yeah. They, they could be your maybe your, your daughters. Are, you, are they? Are they <laughs> your daughters? Yeah, yeah, sure. My daughter is 25. You know, so that's for sure, yeah. And uh, they're very talented, the, you know. Uh, Sepultura daughters in the in the spirit, you know. Sepultura is a big influence in what they do. You know, Fernanda Lira, since Nervosa, I follow uh, them and Prika. You know, they they are, they are warriors of metal, really. You know, they they prepare themselves. They they grew up so much. You know, I I follow Fernanda very early. She jammed with us and my my cover group that I have with my son, Kisser Clan and stuff and. We jam Iron Maiden and stuff, and you know I could I could see her development and uh, and Nervosa as well, and now Crypta and the new album, the new lineup from Nervosa, it's amazing, it's great, you know, and yeah, they are the simple daughters, I guess. <laughs> Maybe you other artists you'd like to to collaborate with? Oh man, all of them, they are not in the album for sure. <laughs> Tell me one. <laughs> You know, there's yeah. so many musicians out there, man, that we admire and stuff. You know, it would be great to do something with Kirk Hammett, for instance. You know, I mean, he's a big four, uh, or, or Kerry King, you know, those guys. Kerry King jammed propaganda with us when we toured together. And I jammed Chemical Warfare with them. Three guitars in London once was, uh, wow. Uh, it's another uh, another dream that I never dreamt, <laughs> you know. And... uh <laughs> So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of musicians out there, not only for metal world, of course, but, um, um, you know, Christina Scabia, she's a great singer, you know, another female that has so many possibilities, you know, great people, you know, great uh, band as well. Uh, and for coming from Italy as well, they have a different uh, point of view and a different perspective on things, which is cool, you know, the same here in Brazil, same in France with Gojira, you know, it'd be great to do yeah. something together with them either touring or jamming or recording, anything, you know. They're, they're a great band that they they have such a, a care for the Brazilian things and, you know, uh, jamming Sepultura and doing Amazonia and stuff. It's great. Tambor do Bronx as well. We have a, a fantastic connection with them, you know, and we created so many great things uh, together that... Uh, you know, was really something impossible before. <laughs> People would never really saw those things together, you know, and really worked out so great. So we are open for any type of possibilities, really. Everything happens very naturally. 
it's not a manager trying to force a, t- a situation with another manager. You know, it's, uh, it's ourselves, musicians, uh, having a backstage chat and trying and creating ideas together, you know, which is the, the truthful way of being, you know, it's great. You, you were talking about your Kisa clan. So let us know the, the story with the new show with Kisa clan. Well, Kisa Clan, we just did last week uh, the, the presentation. It's on the internet, on YouTube, from the Manifesto Bar. Né? Manifesto Bar is a, it's one of the temples of metal here, like after show parties, you know, international tours and stuff. And, and they opened for cover bands, you know. They were very important to keep the, the movement flowing, during, especially during the pandemic, you know. And I have this band with my son, Kisser Clan, I don't know, for 10 years now. I don't know how many years. And uh, we play covers, play music that we like. You know, sometimes we play Sepultura too, but uh, mainly covers. And uh, we share the vocals, me and him, and uh, leads and stuff. We have a keyboard player as well, which opens possibility for, you know, to play more Deep Purple and all that kind of stuff with keyboards and stuff. And, you know, we play the stuff we love. You know, this, this show that we did, we chose the band, and each band we play two songs back to back. You know, so we opened with Kill the King and Holy Diver, you know, from Dio. Mm. And then uh, we played uh, uh, Metallica with uh, Ride the Lightning and, and etc. you know, so it was a lot of fun. So, yeah, you were talking about, uh, yeah, a tour. And I must admit uh, that last time in Paris, you played with Creator. And yeah. I got a punch in my face. Because I, I saw you so many times, and uh, my first show with uh, Sepultura was in uh, maybe just before Roots in the small Elysee Montmartre. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was great. Uh, such a ter- uh, it was terrific moment, you know. It uh, <laughs> was one of my best so shows awesome. ever. But in the Bataclan, and uh, you know, you have a, a, an incredible drummer. I think he's, yes. he's the best one in the world for fun. No doubt about it. No doubt. Yeah. Yeah, Eloy, it's a Brazilian drummer, and we're very lucky to have such great musicians here in Brazil, you know, especially on drumming. We have great drummers and percussionists, you know, you see Santana and all those great names, Paul Simon and stuff, always using some Brazilian here and there regarding to the, the drum world, you know. And Eloy he started playing drums very early. He he was made for Sepultura, man. <laughs> you know, I mean, he played in some other bands and stuff. But here with Sepultura, he's really exploding. You know, he's yeah. really free to uh, to express himself the way he wants to. You know, and Sepultura's music really provide that. And in exchange, you know, he gave uh, uh, me especially to write. You know, many new possibilities. I think Quadra and Machine Messiah and Quadra are the consequence of that interaction we have, you know, which is great. It's so inspiring, you know, it's fantastic. And we we are we are kind of always writing, you know. He, he sometimes he sends me some drum loop and I send some riffs and stuff, and it's really cool that we build stuff from there, you know. And uh, he's a very professional guy, as you said, the best drummer in the world. And uh, at least for Sepultura, he's the best. <laughs> and uh, and it's great, you know, very exciting. Quadra is fantastic. It was very well received. We want to go on the road, you know. That's our our goal. Our main objective really is to, to be back on the road. Let's work for that. It seems that you're going to to be back. Uh, November, yeah, December. Yeah. yeah, we're working for that. So far, so good. And with friends, almost, like uh, Sacred Rage. And Crowbar? Oh, yeah, man. Our brothers. Second Reich is almost like a family, you know. Uh, we met Gloria, our manager, ex-manager. We met most of our crew, our first crew uh, with them. We moved to Phoenix, you know, because of the relationship we have all with them and stuff. And it's such a great feeling to have them back and, and tour together, especially in Europe together again, you know. It's going to be amazing. And ne- next year, you'll play Hellfest. <laughs> what a festival man I, yeah. I think it's a festival of the century <laughs> everybody yeah. is there it's insane it's you amazing. get a deal <laughs> it's amazing I can't wait, I can't wait man. 
Uh, would you would you play maybe with the Tambour du Bronx? Uh, I mean, those festivals are really hard because of the distances of timetable. We have interviews, we have uh, traveling plans and stuff. You never know, man. Uh, always the possibilities are open for for sure. But I mean, the 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 whole uh, um, organizing of situation is really really difficult because of backstage passes they're different and all that kind of stuff you know but uh let's see um uh, nothing planned which is the best situation <laughs> yeah it seems that you like yeah to to write the future to exactly let it let it be <laughs> <laughs> could be a good song <laughs> yeah <laughs> thank you andreas thank you for oh, your thank you man this is a pleasure and see you In Paris, hope so. Oh, yeah. See you soon. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Obrigado. Good night. Obrigado. Ciao. Oh. <laughs>